Hello and welcome back to another Final Girl live stream. Today we are going to break open a new feature film box. This is the organism, and so this was voted on from the YouTube channel. So we're going to break this open, do a little bit of unboxing, and then play through with the new killer and the new location. Really enjoying Final Girl. And I got a couple more that I have not opened yet. And I do hope that I can go ahead and grab some of it at Gen Con. Because I, I have Season 2 and I'm hoping to grab Season 1. So that'd be pretty cool. Uh, also, disclaimer, this game was sent to me for a review as well as live stream. So this game was provided to me from Van Ryder Games. I'm going to go ahead and open up with that. Also, I need a knife. Cannot. It's, there we go. Okay. I love this system. So if you are unfamiliar with Final Girl, the way that it works is that there is a core box that is required to play. This is the core box. This comes with all of the dice, all of the tokens, everything that you need to play. But it, you also need a feature film box. And so that's what we are opening now. The feature film box comes with a location, a killer, and a couple of playable asymmetric powers. And so this, this organism is going to... Well, actually, I have no idea what it is because I haven't opened it yet. But it comes with um, two different final girls as well as location and uh, killer boards. And the coolest thing about this, hey, Faye Knight, greetings and salutations. Just to remind you, during your action phase, you can also discard cards from your hand to add plus one time per card discarded. I honestly did not know that. That's really cool. Thank you for the reminder. Okay, now I'm, I don't, I don't distrust you. I'm just, I'm, I wanna see how I, I missed that in the, um, I just straight up missed it. Discarding action cards at the same time. I just, I don't, I, maybe I got bored reading. <laughs> Thank you, Faye Knight. I appreciate you. Thank you. The coolest part of, well, not the coolest part, but uh, it may be the coolest part, is the way that these boxes work is that they are magnetic. And so you can flip these open and they close back. So here, like station 2890, 2891, this is our location board. And so this is going to go here. And everything here is what you need to play the location uh, 2891. And you can mix and match the different um, killers as well as location. So if I wanted to, I could come and play the, um, the Evo Morph here in station 2891 to give myself just another replayable experience. Then on the other side, the other magnetic side of the box is the killer. So this is... Ooh... Well, this is different. So this is the organism. And so this goes here. And we're going to we're going to read what that is because there's a there seems to be a lot more stuff going on in this one. There are the special items for once you win your first game with the final girl that comes in these boxes, two final girls, then you can add those special items into any future game that you use with those final girls. Apparently, a lot of streamers forget it. The game creators mentioned it in a video, too. Rolls on page 16. Yeah, I don't know how I missed that. That's hilarious. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I'm sure that will come in very, very clutch. Alrighty, so we got some new new meeples. Let's, uh, let's look at Station 2891 first. So each one of these has their own set of rules and... Special rules, the ways that they modify the games. And so the organism looks a little bit more complex. So let's talk about 2891 first. This is it. The modularity in this game is so freaking cool. So this comes with all the item cards, the setup cards, all of the event cards, the tarot cards. Ooh, and it's a special action card. I want to look at that. So that's what is in here. And each one of the locations will come with all of that and any chits that you need to use. It, it is, yeah. So these are the event cards. They're all labeled with whatever it is. Also, a tip. Close call can sometimes be more useful to discard fodder to change a three or three or four into a success than a normal reroll. 
Close call can sometimes be more useful. Okay, so close call. Play after a whole roll to re-roll any one die or re-roll all dice for two time. So can sometimes be more useful as a... Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. To use it as one of the two cards to toss, then do the re-roll. That makes sense. Yeah, I... Yes, I... Good call. Good call on that one. Yeah, so uh, on the dice action system, you will make horror rolls to determine if you pass or fail a test. If you get a star, which is on the five or six, you pass a one or a two, it's a fail. But then on the three and the four side, it shows this card symbol. And so you can discard two cards from your hand to turn that into a star. And so as a one cost card, the close call, you can either discard it to reroll any one die or you can spend spend it for half of the requirement to jump into a uh a success good call yeah no i like that and that's that's one of the things that i i, I find so fun about the game is that there are just so many things that hold on this is the location yeah there's just so many things like that that players will learn more and more throughout the game like, I feel like that happens with, like, Champions or any any game like this that just has so much depth to it that it will just continue to find little tips and tricks like that. That will be really cool. So I appreciate you sharing that. That's awesome. A lot of fun. Ooh. <laughs> Hole. All right. So... We got our terror cards and a action card. The action card is fly faster. <laughs> okay, so it looks like there's going to be something. Um, and then a helicopter. It looks like there's going to be something about a helicopter. Alrighty. So station 2891. Cole doesn't begin to describe it. There ain't really no word for it, to put it plainly, ma'am. You bundle up and you go outside at night. You'll never, ever let go of the guideline. Other than that, we'll mostly be working all the time. You've been playing a lot of Final Girl over the last couple days. In fact, I'm setting up a game for Geppetto, the Puppet Master, and Maple Lane. Still haven't beaten him there. Nice. Nice. I Yeah, and Maple Lane and all of that. That's uh, Season 1. Have you played any of the Season 2 stuff? Special setup. Set up the game as normal, but the following difference is place the helicopter card near the board. Cool. Uh, place the helicopter token on the... That space. I don't know why I put these away. I was like, I should. Okay, so it, oh, it's on the helipad. That's fun. <laughs> so it looks like there's only one escape. So it looks like in the station, uh, there's only. Oh, okay, so this is the outside of the station. This is the inside of the station here, and the green bordered areas are places that you can escape, or you know, take uh, bystanders or victims. Um, I think bystanders. Yeah. Uh, to take out but it looks like there's only one space because it is such a remote station so that's pretty cool that's really cool uh place the skid dozer token on any outdoor space that is adjacent to a uh workspace the skid dozer token oh is the great one I'm, I'm guessing let's go there nope got carnage at the carnival and frightmare on maple lane initially to see if you like the game nice how, how are you enjoying it? Are you enjoying it? And then before setting up item decks, find a two-way radio. You start with this item. Two-way radio. Look at that. So to use, use to move a victim one space at the cost of one time. May not be used on the same victim more than once in a single turn. It has four uses. We'll go ahead and put that in our hand. No reason to not put it in our hand. And then these are the use tokens here. So once we use them, we'll remove a token. But this allows us to get a little bit extra mobility of our victims. Our items are set up by shuffling, dealing four to each pile with the top card of them flipped up. So here at the supply closet, we have the flamethrower. This must be kept in your hands and may not, <laughs> and you may not have any items in your backpack. Dang, okay. So this pretty much takes up everything because it's a two-hand slot. Takes all of your space in your backpack because you're wearing it on your back. Um, may be used once per action phase to deal damage equal to the killer's current health rounded. Half the killer's health rounded <laughs> down. I was like, that seems really good. Or to kill all minions in your space. 
Interesting. Very cool. Oh, yeah. I'm planning on either ordering the rest of the Season 1 boxes or the storage box minis and some of the remaining store Season 1 feature film boxes. Yeah, I was looking at the 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 model and everything. So, I think it's like 180 for Season 1 or like for the Season box, which comes with like the mat and then the storage space. And it's like, hmm. Because I think there are seven feature film boxes in Season 1. Alrighty, we got the Skidozer's keys. Ooh, nice. Okay, so you may now use the Skidozer. Uh, Skidozer. The Skidozer token must remain outdoors. Oh, boo! I can't drive it through. The, <laughs> can't drive it through the giant thing through the uh, through the building. Uh, <laughs> move any. Uh, move to any outdoor space, or when in the outdoor space, just outside of the lab, place the whole token there, which marks those two space adjacents. And so that's that's this whole token. Um, when in the outdoor space just outside the lab, why am I having such a hard time finding the lab? Oh, oh, right there. Okay, I see. Okay, so you're creating a new thing outside. I don't care about the Season 1 mat. It'll be cheaper to get Season 1 piecemeal, but for Season 2, I'll probably order the Season 2 booster box. Nice. Cool. That's exciting. That's exciting. So we got the Skidozer keys. Oh, we, oh my goodness. This is so cool. Tool. The Alaskan Malmut. So when an enemy enters your space, deal damage to it. The next time you take damage, ignore it and discard. Oh, that's so sad. This ally is not considered in your backpack, but may keep the card there. Is there an item limit to what you can have in your backpack? I guess that's a that's a question now. I assume so. You can't just have infinite stuff in your backpack. But items. Your backpack can hold an unlimited number of items. Perfect. Okay, and then these are over here. Item limit, two hands worth carried. I don't think there's a limit to backpack items. Sweet, nice. So outdoor spaces, the five outdoor spaces are outside, including the helicopter exit space. All other spaces are considered indoors. The main building, indoor spaces other than the commander's hut and tool shed. And then hallway spaces, the long spaces in the main building used Use the associated victim holding boards for the core box for these spaces. Okay, so this is like the moon. This is the the uh, diamond. That makes sense. How to save victims. So, the helicopter will have to travel to the Arctic airport to save victims. When the helicopter token is on the exit space, you may freely move it and up to three victims that are with it to the Arctic Station 2891 space with the helicopter card. Oh, okay, cool. So this is a whole nother, that's a whole nother act, or a whole nother space, that's cool. <laughs> okay, um, once the helicopter has victims on board, it cannot return to Station 2891 until it has first dropped the victims at the Arctic airport. Victims on the helicopter card cannot be targeted or killed, and then the helicopter icon means the helicopter may move one space um, on the helicopter card. This new fly action card is the main way to move the helicopter, but some tear cards will allow you to fly as well. To save victims, the helicopter must reach the Arctic airport. The helicopter reaches the airport. Outside of the action phase, apply the effects from saving the victims at the beginning of your next action phase. After the victims have been saved, you may uh, begin moving the helicopter back to... 2891 landing freely so this can go on a helicopter you may move it and up to three victims onto the arctic and go here and then it's two spaces here and you have to come back all the way back to get the helicopter that that's a that's tough frostbite so the frostbite icon means you and each victim and each enemy in an outdoor space gains a frostbite token or loses one health that they already have a frostbite. During each upkeep phase, discard all frostbite tokens for anyone indoors. That's cool. Okay, so just from reading and looking at that, what I 
it's going to be tough to save these victims. Ooh, okay, so indoor spaces, we have to risk the outdoor to get a lot of the items. The supply closet, we do have the flamethrowers, so that's kind of fun. But poor Tool is stuck out in the uh, the commander's hut. Poor pup. The Skidozer keys, that could be pretty nice. We could get that and move very quickly outside. It's going to be tough. Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where all of our victims are and if we can actually save them quickly enough. Okay. Uh, let's read the final girls. Those are cool. Alrighty, so we got... Uh, Kate and Yuki. So uh, these are our new final girls. They Yuki only needs to save four victims. We actually may try Yuki just because I don't know how many. Even worse, you have to find the killer. <laughs> oh no. Uh, it's so cool how different all of these different expansions are. It, it that's so cool. Um so I think I may go with Yuki. Her coat looks a little bit thicker um but for each one of the victims that you save you cover them up and get the associated bonus once you do all of them you flip it over um so kate or yuki once per turn you can play a copy of guard as if it was in your hand that seems really good for each victim receives or saved reduced horror level and then kate your nail maximum health is seven immediately recover all health that's pretty cool while at full health, your rolls have plus one for horror rolls. Wow, that seems really good. Huh. They did a great job making each feature film killer and location mechanic. Yeah, totally agree with you there. Uh, let's try Yuki. Let's try Yuki. But Kate seems really cool. Kate seems really cool because when you're at full health, you get plus one for all your horror rolls. Seems very, very strong. We've got our terror card, so we'll create our terror deck here in a second. I don't know what these guys are. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's item cards. That's cool. Let's let's read before we, we mess everything up. So the organism. No one knows where those things came from, but it started right after our research team arrived. I think one of the dogs was infected, but John, rest his soul, told me that he thought the chemist was performing strange experiments back home. Okay. So, special setup. Setup the game as normal with the following changes when playing the organism. When placing victims, randomly place the red from the Final Girl core box, black and gray killer meeples, one at a time, in a place of the three in place of three yellow victim meeples. Those are considered exposed victims. Nothing is placed on the killer space during setup as the killers are hidden amongst the victims. Place a test Kit item card face up above each of the item decks. Uh, most location boards only need three. Okay, so don't have a ton of space there. So we're actually gonna. Hmm. Okay, we'll just put this here. You can see a little bit of it. So the test kit is you may discard this card to test one of the exposed victims in your space to see if it has been assimilated. Were you aware that the feature film boxes include a character specific item card for each survivor that you're supposed to reveal after they survive a game? Yes. Yeah, they're they're usually buried under the stuff. Um, but I thought I thought that was such a cool touch. So I have I think I've I think I've only beaten the game with three final girls, I think. And so I've opened a couple of them. And so, like, um, I'm not going to... These feel like they could be spoilerly. Ah, that's not a word. Uh, so, like, I if I if we win today, I will open this. However, like, I'm not going to go and say what the other items are for all the other characters. Just because I feel like that... There, there's some fun in opening that. And if you... I don't want to just expose it. But they are really cool items. It, they're really fun. So this is... This is the prize... So Yuki, if we if we uh, if we won, finally won a girl with your fourth survivor. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah, I I picked a survivor and played a lot of games with her just to start out, just to kind of get a feel for the game, and I didn't want to change too many variables. Um, so, but now now I'm just like, let me play more. Let me play more. 
Uh, shuffle the three test result cards to form a face down test results deck. So this is the test results deck. We'll put this right here. Special rules. To win, you must test the exposed victims to find out which ones have been assimilated and destroy all mutated organisms. There will always be at least one, but there could be as three, many as three mutated organisms. Exposed victim zones are now considered victims with the following exceptions. They may never be targeted or killed by a mutated organism. They may not be saved. They may not be replaced with a spectral, special victim meeple. They always panic during the panic phase, even though no victims are killed. If killed by a game effect, uh, immediately draw a test result card and apply the effect C below. So they're they're like they're they're like all the other normal victims, except they're not at all like the normal <laughs> victims. Uh, acquiring test tickets when taking an item card is part of the search action. You can take a test item. Then you can use the test kit or the lab space. Okay, uh, where's the lab space? Or the lab space here to test an exposed victim when you are in their space. It can be a free action that costs no time. Discard the test kit or simply bring them to the lab and draw a test result card. This card will tell you if the exposed victim is safe or assimilated. If the victim is safe, remove the test result card from the game and replace the meeple with a normal yellow victim meeple. If this test was initiated due to an exposed victim being killed, remove it from the board and increase blood less since it was a normal victim as they are truly dead. I'm really enjoying this. This is cool. This is pretty cool. Uh, if the victim is assimilated, reveal the rightmost card on the killer board and place it with a matching mutated organism card. This is now a mutated organism. That's really cool. Place, okay, yeah, place the token matching the meeple above the card. Uh, set up the final health token as you normally would, and then immediately apply all the bloodlust effects on the card. Oh, geez, so lowest level of bloodlust. Shuffle the assimilated test result back into the test result stack. It's possible that the remaining exposed victims have also been assimilated. Okay, so it looks like... Yeah, so these are... Where did I put those? Oh, right here. These are the exposed victims. Or potentially... Potential exposed victims. Yeah. Those are super creepy. Could have zero to three killers, but I think it said you will always have at least one. Because my guess is that there are, yeah. Yeah. So there are three test results. Two of them are safe. One of them is assimilated. And so you'll shuffle this up, pull a card. If it's the assimilated, it shuffles back in. We'll roll a die for it. Oh my goodness. They are con mutated organisms are your considered killers not minions and they take their killer action and may and any terror card action as normal if multiple mutated organisms are in play resolve their actions one at a time starting with the leftmost muted mutated organism as they appear on the appear on the killer board the finale has been triggered the mutated organism will have an additional killer action denotated by the f uh, symbol and they will perform them directly after the killer actions before the finale is triggered they only perform the killer actions followed by resolving a terror card as usual jeez Okay, mutated organism's death and final health tokens. When one of the mutated organism loses its final health, there's at least one other mutated organism on the board. Lay it to its side and finish the current phase before checking uh, the final health token. The token is blank, or it was a white final health token. The mutated organism is dead and should be removed from the board. If it has health, replenish its health per the normal rules. Okay. Okay, so this is what it's saying. So the K is the killer action. The F is the finale action. And this is the bloodlust marker. So whatever is here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> this seems crazy. This is really cool. So special rules. Although each mutated organism has its own final health token, you only get the plus one die bonus once, regardless of how many mutated organisms are down to their final health. Um, I'm just reading the assimilated so bloodlust token is above three so we're going to start with the bloodlust here and it will continuously go up
Okay, so... I think I'm just missing it. So, exposed victim guards, mutated organism guards. Okay. So, when placing victims, randomly place the red, black, and gray killer meeples in one of the yellow victim meeple spaces. They're considered exposed victims. Nothing is placed on the killer space during the setup. Yep, yep, yep. Reveal the rightmost card in the killer board organism. I guess I'm I'm confused which ones I'm supposed to put out there. So these are these are exposed victim. Oh wait, what? Oh, these these are You pick one of each one of these, I guess? Why am I missing this? Okay, so shuffle the three exposed victim cards. Shuffle and place the exposed victim cards face down in the three spaces on the killer board. Okay, so these are the exposed victim cards. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, 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 oh. I see what's happening. Okay. So what we do is we shuffle these up on this. Yeah. Face down, human side up. And then once we reveal them, once, if they are assimilated, we will flip this up and then replace it with the matching card. Thank you so very much, Fanite. I don't know why I was having such a hard time with that. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So these are here. This is giving me sweet. That's cool. That's cool. Okay, we'll keep these rules nearby and handy. Cool. So let's do our setup. Fire board, six cups and dice, action cards, future. Killer board, shuffle the finale card, those with, and place it so that one of the lines. So I think these are the finale cards. It's just a little different. This is a horrible thought. The organism and the carnival having to deal with the killer and the item track cards and possibly terror track cards. Oh, geez. And that's what I like about the game, the modularity. And you can just like create just some horrendous or epic situations. It's so fun. Uh, okay, let's do our terror deck. So we shuffle the location and the killer item card, or the terror cards, I'm sorry, together. And we'll deal out 10. Deal out 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So we'll get a nice mix of killer and location terror cards. We have to do a setup event as well as, or the setup and then a uh, event card. But let's do our setup first. And let's say that we will replace, who do we, who do you want to win? I want me to win. I want me to win. <laughs> hey, and Flames, how's it going? Um, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm curious how because it says randomly choose. In a few days, you plan to order some sleeves for the item setup and event cards. That that'll be nice. That'll be nice. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be really nice. Um, let's do the fourth, fifth, and sixth meeple. When reading left to right, will be replaced with these. So our setup card, we got one. 
So we said that was going to be one. Two, three. Four, five. So this is the blue. That's hard to see. And then six is going to be in this hallway. I'm going to switch this. So these are the infected. They could be, they could bring everything down. Oh, poor, poor dude is out here in the middle of the cold. That's not good. And then nothing is placed in the killer. I draw the setup card, collect the meeples, indeed, and do a blind draw. Oh, that, yeah, that's definitely a better way to do it. <laughs> that's absolutely a better way to do it. Oh, we need two over here. Okay, so we should have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. Where did I miss one? In the lab. There we go. Sweet. Our event. There has been an accident in the lab. Well, that's not good. An explosion has occurred in the lab. Anyone in the lab immediately takes damage. Oh. Does that increase bloodlust? I think it does. Doesn't it? It's any time a victim is killed. Increase bloodlust. Any deaths? Well, that's a bummer. It's a tough. That's a tough start. Place the hole token over the. Oh, well, we get the hole at least. Token over the bottom wall of the lab. The lab is now adjacent to any outdoor spaces next to it. Okay. One victim for for easier access to outside. Maybe, maybe that's worth it. Alrighty, let's go ahead and set up our health. So we have six. This starts at five. So we go five of them here. And then we draw a random token from the bag. I have to feel because they're a little bit beveled on the top, and so I can I can feel and pull out the pull them out correct space. So we have five health. If we ever lose our health, we will flip this over. This has a chance to have zero or additional health on it, and that will help us or hinder us, I guess. Um, based on the um. It can have additional health that we basically get an adrenaline shot. It can be a huge pain when, for example, six victims are in the big top and you just got there to start leading them out. Only a terror trap card to try oh, no. <laughs> Just shoot up. Oh my goodness. <coughs> Sorry. It, it's what it, I think it's really fun. <coughs> oh, jeez. I think it is fun that we. Or that it feels like you can tell a story after you play this game. Like, it feels very much like you can play the game and then relive the story. And it's just, like, such a cool experience in that sense. Okay. So we're here. So we have the two-way radio. So we can use this as for one time. Um, remember, we have six time to start out. Um, to move a victim one space. I'm thinking about, well, this helicopter pad is still outside. I think this victim is kind of donezo. I'm thinking about taking some of these people to the lab. That could help. Or I could work on trying to get... That seriously happened this morning. There's a show in the big top. Everyone runs to the big top. Next time a rope trigger traps there. And that's so like cinematic. Like you could see that happening in a movie. <laughs> also, um, actually I don't know if these are No, never mind. 
I am currently using, and I have sleeved in this game in new Percival sleeves. And so I'm collecting and doing just like playing a lot with um, different sleeves. And so I just got a Kickstarter delivered for the Percival sleeves. And so that's what I've sleeved this in. I plan on running my next Arkham campaign with Phantom sleeves, which is the new Capstone game sleeves. And then the the next one, I will run more Percival sleeves. But I got a lot of Percival sleeves, so I've started sleeving some board games in it. I like the Percival sleeves a lot. If you like a glossy sleeve, they they uh, so far they've held up really nicely. Really interested in seeing the, how this game plays. I was looking at buying some sets the other day. Hey, how's it going? It is a lot of fun. Um, and so we're about to dive in. I will try and talk through the reasoning as well as all of the rules and stuff as well. But basically what we're trying to do in this situation, and this will be different for every single situation or killer that you play, but we have these meeples here. Wait, no, not this one. This is me. We have these three meeples here who may be infested. And so we have to test them to see if they are infested and we'll check these test result cards. If they are, we will flip over the the corresponding card. And that's what those tokens are for. I was wondering what these tokens are for. This is what these are for. Flip over the corresponding card, which will reveal a killer that we will then have to take out. So everyone feels really different, but kind of what I'm thinking is I think I probably want to I think, I, well, I have to test them all, correct? In order to win. Where did I put the, hmm. Ah, oh, there it is. It can be very swingy. Sometimes it's brutal with events and terror cards can uh, combo in to kill victims very quickly and you get wrecked. Other times the stars align. You rescue almost everyone. Find a decent weapon and manage to defeat the killer quickly. It can be swingy, and I I am okay with that because it can be a 20-minute game. So when I first got this, I thought it was some big, epic, three-hour-long game. It's really not. It's like 20 to 60 minutes, depending on how it goes. And so if it is super swingy, you can play multiple times. It feels like champions in that way. Um So when one of the mutated organisms loses its final health and there's still one other mutated organisms on the board, they're considered killers, not minions. Take their killer action. Any tarot card actions is normal. And still other times it comes right down to the wire in a very tense match. Oh, I, and I feel like I've had more of those tense matchups. So I assume that I have to test and either save slash kill all three of them. Sounds good to me. Love Champions also enjoy a game that being brutal at times. Oh, yeah. Uh, it has a lot of modularity because this is the killer board. This is the location board. You get one killer board, one location board with every single feature film box that you buy, which I don't have any near me that I can grab real quick. Um, but then you can mix and match all of them. And so like the... Um, the Storybrooke Woods, I can play the organism at the Storybrooke Woods, which is from a different, and it, it mixes up everything. Okay, and then all your actions are uh, carried out by these cards. So we have these zero uh, level cards that we can use to take actions. We have six time in each of these cards, depending on how they how successful they are. So like the walk, if we get two successes, we'll roll number of dice equal to our our terror level currently we're in the white so we're rolling two dice if we get two successes we move up to two spaces if we get and we reduce time by one at any time we can stop taking actions and if we do that then we can use the remaining time to buy more cards from the tableau so the sprint costs two time to buy one second Forgot my dice rolling tray. I don't know where I'm putting the dice rolling tray. 
just gonna move all of this up. Perfect. Okay. So I think we should probably just start by well, maybe trying to get this person out of the <laughs> out of the um out of the cold. We can also go get tool and get the ski dozer. But I think the ski dozer actually probably is not the biggest priority for us now because we have the lab. So we've already kind of burrowed through that through the event card. So maybe we want to, it does help us move a lot outside, which could help, but I'm thinking we, we have, let's go test somebody. And we can test somebody just by having them in a lab, I believe. And this is all... Yeah, it's just a free action to test them in the lab. Hey, Canadian Mustache, how's it going? Um, That being said, if we flip up a assimilated, we're going to be in trouble, but let's just walk. We gotta walk somewhere, so we're gonna roll two dice because we're a current terror level, um, or a horror level. Two, we got one success, so we move up to one space and we reduce time by one, so we only can move here. <laughs> and yep, and we lose the time. But now we're in this space. We're in this space with everybody. My latest win was very tense affair. I didn't manage to rescue many people, but I did manage to keep the Frightmare Dr. Fright busy so he wasn't hunt, uh, hunting them. I almost lost because he, his final power is kill two victims at the start of the killer phase. If there are no victims, deal four damage. Oh, geez, to the final girl. Nancy has four health. I primarily won because I stumbled into him in the boiler room min, mini game. Otherwise, I, that's so tense. <laughs> that's so much fun. Um... We'll, we'll use this two-way radio. We could push this guy over to the helicopter pad. Or we could bring him into the hallway and hope, hope he's fine. Let's use... Let's walk again. So we'll re-roll. We got one star. So we will move into this hallway. Or I guess we can move here if we wanted to. Yeah, we'll move into here. And we'll bring both these victims with us. Remember, even if he's at the copter, he won't board and leave till you are there too. Yeah. It's when I'm there too? When the helicopter is on that space, you may freely move it. And up to three victims that are with it onto art expansion of the helicopter card. Once the helicopter has victims aboard, it cannot return until it's first dropped the victims. I don't think so. I think I just need to use this move, the helicopter move. Is that true? When the helicopter token is on the exit space, you may freely move it and up to three victims that are with it onto the Arctic Space 2891 Space Helicopter card. Once the helicopter has victims on board, it cannot return until it is first dropped off. To save victims, the helicopter must reach the Arctic Airport. If the helicopter reaches the airport outside of the action phase, apply the effects. Base rules? Hmm. I'm wondering if this secedes the base rules or supersedes the base rules because and mainly like this only has three spaces so I can't be on the helicopter it doesn't look like Page 13, Blackheart. Victims are naturally confused, brave, stupid at 
combination thereof. Therefore, they can only be saved to convinced by the final girl. As such, victims that end up alone in an exit space are not automatically saved. They are not automatically saved, but they could be placed on the air or on the helicopter. Maybe I have to be there to put them on the helicopter, but I can't get on the helicopter. Yeah, it never says that I am allowed to move on to the helicopter. So that's kind of how I'm reading it. And no, no space in here. It says that I'm allowed to be on the helicopter. Um, I am allowed to put victims on the helicopter. The copter can freely move, but they won't board it without your help. When the helicopter token is on the exit space, you can freely move it and three victims that are with it onto the Arctic Space 2891 of the helicopter card. So basically you have to go there and move them onto the copter card, then it can fly off. Hmm. That's very confusing to me. Cause it, it I I see both sides. I see both sides. Okay, cool. It has to move onto the card to the end space and come back through the card to pick up more peeps. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, but do I need to be on the helicopter space in order to put people on the helicopter? Or it's a normal rescue just with a delay between them leaving and being credited. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I wish that was more explicitly called out in the rules. Because it leads... To me, there's a lot of ambiguity there. Because they won't, they won't board the copter placement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get it. I get it. I just think that it, it could have been explained a little bit better in the rules. Anyways, I just walked again. So we're in here. Um, Let's focus. We'll short rest and weak attack to change this to uh, success. So we got two successes. So we lower this and go two up in time. Bought this one recently. Haven't played it. Yet. Nice. Awesome. It's a, I, so you bought the game or you bought this feature film? I think we're going to hang. Uh, we'll try it. Focus. Why not? We'll roll. We'll roll the dice. Boom. Love that. So we got nine money or nine time. We'll end here. I'm focusing on season one. Are the feature box? Nice. Cool. Yeah. This is this one so far, like just the setup. It's it's really cool. And I think I say that about every single one just because I'm not as familiar with the system as a lot of people are. And so like every single one that I open feels new and refreshing. But that's just it's just cool. Focusing on the season one feature film box first and we'll buy season two all at once. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. Okay, so we got nine. Let's go ahead and grab a sprint for two. Let's go ahead and buy a distraction for three. I think we'll want the fly faster card at some point. I don't know if I want it now. Um, it may be worth grabbing a search. A guard could... Nah, it's fine. We're going to grab another sprint. And we have two. We'll grab two close calls. Reset. Hey, Magic Moo Smoo, if they made a final girl, final guy variant, who would you pick as the, uh, the bad guy? <laughs> uh...
Fair enough. I got the Carnegie Maple Lane first because I enjoy the Nightmare on Elm Street movies and the Geppetto thing seemed interesting. Who would you pick as the bad guy? I don't know. That's a good question. That's a really good question. I I'm not I'm not sure. Okay. Killer action. We don't have any killer actions. We'll resolve a terror card. Hit and run. If there are no mutated organisms in play, increase this by one. And discard one random action card from your hand. Oh, that's brutal. So we got uh, five. We'll we roll a six. One, two, three, four, five. Thank goodness. Nope, oh, that goes here. Deadites, of course. Only one more final guy would be possible, and that's Ash Williams. Hmm. Thinking of Ash too. Nice. He came to your mind. Nice. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Nice. Okay. Top of the round. We're gonna play a. No, first we're gonna do a distraction. Yeah, what's the worst that could happen? Hmm. I'm going to change this to two successes as well. I'm going to reduce this to two and increase our time by two. And we'll play a sprint. We've been rolling pretty good. Move up to two spaces. Um, We'll go one, two. So we're going to be in the lab. But I'm gonna I'm gonna hang out. I'm not gonna use my free action to test them. Or if they somehow manage a final death. Ooh, a final destination. That would be really interesting. Yeah, where <laughs> everyone just keeps dying in horrific ways. Oh geez. Okay. So we have time to go down. We have seven to buy. Two, four, six. Let's find. A distraction for three. Down to four. Oh, I've I've been forgetting to do two way radios. Nice. Um I'm gonna have just use one of those to move him to the helicopter pad and I'll hop over there. The twist at the end of the last movie was interesting. I, I, I haven't seen the, the latest Final Destination movie. Okay. Uh, so we have three. I feel like I will want a search at some point, but I also don't want to just float one. So what's a three and improvise? All right, I guess we could buy a, buy a fly faster and a search. And then we've got two, four, six. So we're up to nine cards. So that's good. This resets to six. We're good there. We're good there. We got a lot of cards. I'm I I I have found that I really like to just grab distraction early there, and then like early in the game and try and get this down into the green as much as possible. I found I found that that to be pretty nice. Probably never happened, but the doppelganger concept from the movie Us would be cool. I don't. I haven't seen Us. I need to see us. It's kind of pricey, but don't forget about improvise too. Uh, planning can also be clutch, especially if your horror gets to seven. Oh yeah, planning is incredible. Um, improvise until the action phase ends. All three and fours are a success for the next horror roll. Only all three. That yeah, that's that's really cool. Yeah, I need to I need to just buy some of these cards because like I haven't found myself using improvise or planning. And I just need to buy them. Planning also has plus one die if you fail completely. Oh, true. Yeah. So is that... Is that... Okay, I guess I didn't understand planning. Is that plus three dice or is that just three dice for the next roll? Because I, I may have been reading that wrong. I assume that if you got two successes, you get to roll three dice for the next horror roll. But if it's plus three die, that's significantly better. Plus... That... Oh... Oh, yeah, planning's way better. <laughs> I was like, that seems really expensive or not that good. Okay. <laughs> nice. Cool. Oh, my goodness. I love streaming, and people can help me. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, we're at Terror. 
If there is no mutated organism in play, panic each victim at or adjacent to a... Uh, here. So, oh no, he's running out into the cold. And then these diamonds are going to panic. We'll panic the potentially... Um, no, we'll, we'll do the safe one first. Uh, so a one. Where's my one? Oh, in here. And then we'll do the potentially mutated one. Four. So this hops over to the other hallway. Planning into distraction would be so helpful if Horace... Go oh, yeah, I bet. That's cool. Alrighty, let's go ahead and no, let's let's go distraction here. Yeah, so we'll roll two. We roll any cock dice. I am feeling pretty good about this. About this. <laughs> Okay, then. Well, that's nice. Um, let's do a two-way radio. We'll spend a time to move this person in one space closer to the helicopter. Let's go ahead and use our free action to test this mutated. So we got our test results. We'll, shake, we'll shuffle them up, and then we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And so remember, if they're safe, they get replaced with a normal victim. If they're not, then we're going to flip over this card and see what happens. Two. One, two. They are safe. They are safe. So we'll remove that card. And then we will replace this guy with a normal victim. If you can get a weapon, don't forget that it can add to retaliate as well. I, don't, I didn't think I knew that. That's cool. Okay, so this, so this is safe. So we're good. Alrighty, that's that's exciting. I think I'm going to get them to the helicopter. Get to the chopper. Uh, defense plus damage is nice. Yeah, the the last game I was playing, well, the last game I streamed, the the dark power was that they couldn't take damage from like retaliate, and I was just like, oh no. And I think I had a final girl that gave me retaliate. I was like, ah, but yeah, I think, yeah, I think we're going to try and save some of these victims so that we can jump or we can upgrade Yuki. We're sitting at three dice. We're feeling pretty good. I think we're going to, let's walk. We're rolling three dice. That's more like it. We'll focus at least one of these into a, a five or into a success. We'll talk, we'll do a, mm, yeah, we'll do that. And then we reduce this. We're going to walk one more time. Roll three. Sweet. Okay. Um, We'll move all here. We'll reduce this. We will get to the chopper. So we will put these three on the chopper. One, two, three. And then this goes here as a free action. We're going to be stuck outside. We're feeling pretty good. <laughs> you're right. You, you're so right. <laughs> That's on me. That's on me. Expect to see absolute destruction here soon. We will, we're going to get wrecked. Okay. Uh, we're going to play five faster. We got, we're going to toss a short rest and a weak attack to make this a success. And then fly faster allows us to move the helicopter two spaces, which will save 
these three victims. Um, we have just search. We're going to go move one space. I'm going to go here. Take furious strike. Sweet. And then increase our time by two. Did I, did I decrease time? I don't think I did. We were here. We, yeah, we went up to eight. We walked down. We walked down. We flew faster. No, we're good. And then increase time by two. That takes us up to seven. Don't forget that walk doesn't let you choose to move. It does let you choose at the cost of health and two time on a field roll too. Depending on hand, sometimes it can be worth to take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just, I, I knew that I had another walk in my hand. And so I was like, I need at least one success. Um, oh, I probably could have taken the health. Um, yeah, you're right. I probably should have taken the health and the two time penalty cost. That that would have been better, I think. But now we got the Furious Strike. I am hanging out outside. We have seven time, which we can't use anything. So we will uh we'll move into the buy phase. And we got seven time. So What's in the tool shed? The tool shed has the mosquitoes are key. I may go up to the supply closet and try and grab that flamethrower. I think the flamethrower probably is going to be a good thing to grab at some point because we'll just wreck whatever ones we save. So many things to keep track of in the game. Consistently having to reevaluate plans. Yeah, and that I and I like that. Like I think that's awesome. I think okay. So I think I think our our plan is to test more of these organisms we have to do that before we can really do anything um so let's go ahead and let's see if we can go grab this guy and test him that's kind of our longer term plan um we'll spend four to grab both sprints that will help us do that we got three i go distraction again but like we're feeling pretty good about that hmm Now I'm now I'm like on on the track of just grabbing the close calls to like as a as a cheap fodder to throw to switch your fours and fives. I think that's a really good tip, Fate Knight. Uh we'll take a search and a close call. This recess to six. We'll play we'll throw all of these over here. Fly faster. We need to we need to tell him to fly faster. Get back to Get back to the landing pad because I do need to save at least one more victim. I would like to do that on. I'd like to fill up the chopper with three people if at le if at anything's possible, um, because that is efficiency. But it is tough to. We have to fly faster. <laughs> we can only. Well, I guess we can radio the two handed, or we can two hand radio someone over there. But I'm afraid someone's gonna get uh, get frostbit before we can do it. Okay, so killer. It could be anywhere or anyone. If there are no exposed victims in play, discard this card and draw the next character card. Ooh, that's tough. Have you seen how disgusting it is? If there's no mutated organisms in play, discard this card and draw the next. Wow, we are flying through this terror deck. There are no victims in play. Discard this card and draw another tarot card. Otherwise, for each victim in your space, you may look through one item deck. Place any item face up on the deck and shuffle the others face on underneath. Increase our horror level. We don't have any victims in our space. Um, ooh. And then that's frostbite move. Oh, anyone outside gets a frostbite token. That's what that symbol means. Which can be, get to the chapa. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the right one. Yep, so Frostbite. The Frostbite icon means you and each victim and each enemy in an outdoor space gains a Frostbite token or loses one health if they already have a Frostbite token. During each upkeep phase, discard all Frostbite tokens from anyone indoors. So I have a Frostbite token. And so does this guy. The theming of this seems really good. Are the other packs good? Yeah. Yeah. The that 
I, that is, I think the mechanics of the game are really good. I think the biggest strength of this game is the theme, where everything seems so thematic. Like I was just playing the Evo Morph, where I'm on like the USS Conrad, and like the the organism in this, or not the organism, the killer, is like upgrading and getting more powerful, and it's like a hatchling. But then like once it upgrades, it can become invisible and like hops around the map, and you have to try and like search it out. So you're going around the map. And like searching, it has a special action card to like search and see if you can find the Evo Morph. It, if you do, it pops up in your space and then you can fight it before it goes invisible again. Um, I've, I've played that one and then I've played um, the like the Big Bad Wolf, which is from Storybrook. Storybrook, it's like Red Riding Hood basically. And it's that one's a little bit more straightforward, but it is kind of like a fast pace, just like I'm going face where the the killer is coming and he moves quick and he kills quick. And it's just like, it's chaos. I can only imagine how much of a pain fighting an invisible thing can be. It's fun because then you can like, if you search and you don't find it, you place a token in that room and then it cannot appear in that room. And so you're kind of like, you're kind of like narrowing down the positions that it can be in. And so you can kind of strategically place it and so it, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. So frostbite and then move the helicopter. Gets breakfast. Oh my God. What happened? Oh wait, it's just frostbite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Magic. It, it's a, uh, it's, it's a cool, it's a cool mechanism. Alrighty. Okay. So it is our turn. We're already like halfway through the terror deck. And so the way that the Terra deck works, for those of you all who are new or are unfamiliar with the game, is the killer that you play and then the location that you play, as I said before, are interchangeable and you can mix and match. So I can play the organism in Storybrooke if I wanted to. You take all the killer Terra cards and then all of the location Terra cards, shuffle them together, and then deal 10. And so you get a mix. This one specifically is for Station 2891, whereas the next Terra card or this Terra card is for the organism. I saw your Aeons in and Rabbit versus the Rabbit Nemesis. Did you ever complete the game on your off time? Uh, I have <laughs> complete the game. Uh, I completed that scenario or like that that box. I've played through that box before, which is Outcast. I have played through Aeons in Legacy. I've played through the core set, um, and then I have I have New Age and I have uh, whatever the newest one is. War, no, not War Eternal. Whatever the newest one is. Um, oh, I, sw I, I switched. <laughs> I put the wrong one out there. That's what happened. Nice. So almost everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love that game. I swapped out the wrong meeple. Future and past. Yes. Thank you. But I did just back the... What's the newest... Why can I not? I need more coffee. Um, Astro Knights. So I backed the newest Astro Knights expansion, which is like the the successor to yeah Astro Knights. Good, yeah. Uh, it's like it's like the next. Um, it's it's revised. I don't know. It's different, but it, it's very similar. It shares a lot of the same DNA as Aeon's in. So I backed that, and I'm hoping to pick that up at Gen Con, just like the core game, because I didn't buy. The core game with the with the, with the um, Kickstarter. I just bought it with. Um, I just bought the expansion because I wanted to get the core game before it it uh it showed up. I have a lot of catching up to do, since, so I skipped. The the game kicks my butt too. <laughs> yeah, it it can be tough. Okay, so on our turn, let's go ahead and sprint. Got one success, move up to two spaces. We can discard two cards. No, I think we're good. We'll run. We're going to go ahead and make this the diamond space. So now that, that diamond space corresponds with here just because it was getting a little crowded. And we lose one time.
Should we try and two-way radio this guy over to the helicopter pad? Or are we just kind of assuming that he's probably not going to make it? He got frostbit. He's out there. We could try and get him back inside. That, that seems like a lot of work. Let's go... Let's go, let's do another sprint. Oh, that's not good at all. Ah, um, okay. So move up to one space. We will do that. We'll go ahead and just move into the hallway here. Uh, we'll take a damage and we'll lose two time. And we'll end our action. Yikes. Uh, I have a close call. We're going to close call that. We're going to close call that. To be honest, he probably won't survive long. Maybe if you moved him closer to a building, but not now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to play close call. So we're going to reroll all dice for two. Time. Okay. At least one success. So move two spaces. So we will... I'm going to leave... Well, only only two of these can follow me. I'm going to move one of them, or two of them, into the hallway. And then I'm going to move up here, but I'm going to leave these two in the hallway. Because I, I can pick them up back on the on the way. Um, cool. We got three. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang out. And we will go ahead and just... We'll grab all of these zero-cost cards. Two, four, six... And let me check the, the Frostbite. The Frostbite is, during each upkeep phase, discard all the Frostbite tokens from anyone inside. And upkeep is at the, at the, at the end of the round. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Two, four, six, eight, nine. We have three. Let's go ahead and grab a distraction, just because I'm afraid that we're about to get out of the green here. And that can help us just buy more cards. It's kind of an investment in our future. Sprints come over here. Close call here. Reset here. Terror. It must be you. If there are no victims on the board, discard this card. If there are any victims in your space, take one damage per victim. You may defend. Okay, so it's one. That's fine. Okay. Now I'm really glad I left him in the hallway. In each space with at least two victims, and at least one is a normal victim, one normal victim is killed. Oh, well, that's a bummer. So here and here. Increase blood loss by two. In each space with at least two victims. Ah, yeah, that was tough. Once we flip this first card, we apply all the bloodlust from that card, and it's going to be bad. And then the killer would move. But no killer. Ow. Okay, so we will remove a frost bit token from me because I am indoor, but this dude gets to keep his. And we got a, we got a big hand. We got a big hand. And I think what we'll do is we will work to move and test this uh, this gray guy in our lab. I've been looking for a new game for a while. As I wait for a new set of watch, this is a strong candidate. It's a great game. Um, and yeah, so if you are looking at it, um, I'm not quite sure how familiar you are with the system. But you need the core box and you need a feature film. Um, the core box comes with everything that you need to play except for like the scenario and then the feature films are the scenarios and so like I'm playing through one of the scenarios. I wish I need to like when I'm streaming just have a box that I can show but those are like 20 bucks and then you have all of that and it comes with all the items and it cause, comes and then once you get a second one you can start mix and matching everything at least he didn't die of frostbite yet yeah exactly um okay Start us out, we're gonna go distraction. We're gonna roll three dice. We got one. We're gonna probably toss a short rest and a weak attack to make this a two success because we can change this four into a uh, star. Kind of expensive overall, but it's 39.98 or so to try the game. Core box, but like, 
I don't think it's that's yeah. I I mean like I typically think of a board game being 60 bucks. Hey Lucas, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm afraid that one of these uh these infected organisms on the board may attack me soon. But other than that, you know, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> um okay, so we got this goes down to if we go down anymore, and then this pops up to nine. Okay, let's go walk. Ah! Ew. Move up to one space for a health. Did I, I tossed my short rest. That was dumb. We'll toss two focuses to change that to one success. Reduce time, move up to one space. We're going to move and take this guy into this hallway. Much better than Bloodlust Skyrocking because Horror went up three and it was already at seven. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to walk. No. Oh, my luck. All my luck is going away. Uh, we'll, we'll move one space at the cost of two health. All right, cost of one health. We'll need to heal at some point soon. But we get zero successes, so we can move one space and move into the lab. We're only going to take the evil guy. Potentially evil guy, I should say. Uh, we lost the health and lose two times. So we're down to six. At this point, um, we're going to end with six. And so what that means is we can... I think we probably have to get the fly faster at some point because we need to save more people. I'm actually will have brought this guy along because if this guy is safe, I can potentially get them both to the chopper. So I'm going to spend one time to buy a fly faster. I'm going to spend two. To get a sprint. That leaves me with three. At this point, a long west may be worth using. I think that's very fair. So instead of a sprint, just take a little bit of time. Spend five on a long rest. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that is the better long-term plan. It kind of all depends, hinges on if this guy is going to be uh, evil or not. Put the distraction back. And we will check a tarot card. Uh-oh. Oh, oh the, 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 the chopper is moving. Good. No victims in play. Discard this card. Panic all victims that are indoors. Dang it. Come back. <laughs> uh, then move all victims from each hallway to the rec room. Okay, so panic all victims indoors. So we'll go here first. Actually, he can just move here. Oh, wait. I guess you do roll the dice. And a one, he doesn't move. Uh, the one in the diamond, which is over here. I, I'll replace this here. Now, the problem is, is he could run outside. He does run outside, and he'll get frostbit at that point. We'll go the infected one. Five. He goes to the hallway. We'll do the non-infected one. A one. He runs outside. He's going to get frostbite as well. That's not good. Ah, that's not good. Hope he's safe. Plan for him being a mod. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and then... We got this guy in this hallway. A three. Into the kitchen. And then it says... Then move all victims from each hallway to the rec room. And then frostbite. So this guy dies. Bloodlust increases. Because he already had a frostbite token. Then both of these guys get frostbite. Get them onto the chopper soon. And then helicopter moves. 
I think that that moves there. Yeah, landing freely. Okay. Okay, well, the helicopter is back. And so... I may, I may just try and get these two frostbitten people on there. And start sending... I don't, I don't have any move cards. Oh! What a, what a blunder. What a blunder. I probably should have grabbed the sprints and long rested later. Okay, everyone is panicked because the chapter did return. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I probably should have. Oh, we're at six. I guess we'll long rest here. We got two successes, so we heal four. So we're gonna heal three. And lose the time. Boom. Um, I don't have any move. Okay, we'll end. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna have five. Yeah, we'll grab a sprint for two. We got two, four. We got five cards in our hand. Our hand limit is ten. We got. Two, four, six over here. Um, remember, you can discard to get time. Yeah, but I, I, I don't. I guess I could discard a search, but I'm happy with the other ones. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll discard a search and get one more time. Um. So that gives me four. We're gonna we're gonna grab a sprint for two. We're gonna grab two close. Um We're at two, four, five. So I can add five more cards. I'm gonna add. Don't need short rest. I'm gonna grab a weak attack, a walk, a walk. So that's gonna be three. That puts me at two, four, six, eight. I have two time left to spend. One thing that helps me remember that mechanic is one survivor's abilities, they get double time. Oh, that's interesting. That's really cool. I like that a lot. Um, let's take a guard, which will take us down to zero. And we have one card left. Two, four, six, eight, nine. We'll grab a focus. Long grass goes back over here. This resets to six. And I hope all my victims don't die. That would be really sad. I need to start painting the season one minis. Oh... The minis are really cool. Um, I actually do have the minis, but I they're harder to see on stream. Because like I, I lay these down so the camera can kind of get them a little bit easier. And the minis are just a little hard. I think if I painted them, that could work. Okay, come on, no frostbite. Okay. If there's no mutated organism in play, panic all exposed victim, victims. And... Increase bloodlust or not bloodlust. Uh, so panic all exposed victims. So okay, exposed is these guys. I was trying to. I, I was checking to see if exposed with was the ones that could be the organisms or if they could be or exposed to frostbite. And so let's go with the black meeple first. He's going to stay where he's at. The gray meeple. He's going to move into the hallway. 
I really want the season one minis because the puppet tokens are hard to see on some maps. Oh. I'm really curious about this puppet thing. It sounds really interesting. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and use two-way radio. Move this guy here. Then we're going to sprint. For one success, move two spaces. That's actually all we need. So we will move one, two, and throw these guys on the helicopter. This will move here. Reduce time. Fly faster. Uh, no, I'm going to uh, discard a focus and a weak attack to change this to a success. This is going to move two. And uh, I actually don't have any health to heal, but we'll flip this over. Reach victim saved. Reduce horror level. Once per turn, you can play a copy of guard as though it was in your hand. I totally forgot about that. I probably should not have grabbed guard. <laughs> Put our victims back. Okay. So now we're hanging out in the middle of the helicopter pad. I'm honestly kind of okay not saving anybody else. Mostly brown tokens and a mostly brown carnival map. Difficult. Yeah, that can be really tough. That's tough. So I think... Let's sprint. Uh, I needed to reduce time. So it is one success. Move up to two spaces. Do I have a walk? I do have, I have a couple walks. We're going to go up here. Reduce. We'll walk. We got one success, which is... Uh, move one space. It would be nice to move two spaces if we could. We do have another walk, so let's just go ahead and move into here, into the hallway. We're going to try to test the gray meeple. We will walk again. I don't think I moved that. One success. Move into the next hallway. And we'll end on that, the two. But we don't have any moves. <laughs> We're not going to have any moves again. I keep I keep finding... Surprised you haven't gone after the flamethrower yet. Yeah, I wanted to flip over here first. And... Yeah, the flamethrower seems really nice. But I, wanted, I need to get rid of... Alright, I guess I wanted to use all the two-way radio charges because it wipes your backpack and your hand so you can't carry anything but the flamethrower and so i was trying to just kind of save things before i grabbed the flamethrower but the flamethrower is going to be that is going to come in handy i think i think that's probably the right call to go for so go for that um i'm going to discard guard to increase time mainly because i can play guard as if it was in my hand B Snow, final girl, you finally made it. How's it going? Yeah, we're uh We'll see. We'll see. This is season two. This is the organism at station 2891. We don't know who was infected. We're trying to figure out who's infected. We've already saved one person who's been exposed. They were not infected. We actually got them on the helicopter and saved them. And so now we have two other exposed victims that we're gonna we're gonna try and uh either the, the, what we're trying to figure out right now is do we want to test one of them or this is COVID the board game. <laughs> nice. Uh, test them now or go for the flamethrower. So flamethrower sounds pretty cool. So we got three. We'll grab all of these. Um, We'll grab a distraction. Reset. 
return. I always find myself in this like this spot where I I where I I have all my all my movement cards in like one cycle. Except for when if you get the Frightmare on Maple Lane feature film box, the shotgun is a horrible weapon. One to two range, two damage, two shots, but can only be used on targets if they're on the streets. And it's only a straight line on the street from where you're... Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder why you can only use it on the streets. Got a terror. Are we alone? If there are no exposed victims in your space... Or in a space with a normal victim, discard this card and draw the next character target. We actually do have an exposed victim. One at a time for each exposed victim in your space, a space with a nor in your space or a space with a normal victim, reveal a test result. Okay, so both of these are gonna do it. Okay. This could change. HOA <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> HOA kind of uh Okay, so let's do the one in our space first. We'll go even, odd, even. Assimilated! Resolve the mutated organism and apply bloodlust effects from the bottom of the current bloodlust level. Okay, so this was the pink. Nope, that's where the gray. So we're going to flip this. It's this guy. So we find the associated card, which is here. And we get here. Oh my goodness. This is not good. This is not good. Okay, so bloodlust. This will move one towards the uh, a victim, so that's going to move into this hallway. Horror goes up, kill a victim, and then we're at one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Horror level goes up again. No, that's so sad. Out, out of the green. Out of the green. <laughs> make sure they got two shots and 12 boosters before you interact with them honestly not why sure you aren't wearing them yeah right oh my goodness this could get this could get bad this could get bad where did my there they are so far i think this has been my favorite uh my favorite first with the evil morph and the big bad wolf i think this is my favorite i think this is really cool okay go top even bottom odd odd oh it's safe thank goodness Okay. Okay, so this gets replaced with a normal victim. And that is everyone. So we only have this guy to take care of, which honestly is the best you could do. Um actually, I don't know the power level of these two. This guy, this guy looks like the worst. I I wonder if these are more powerful. I don't know. Uh but we need to do health. So let me grab six health for this guy. This, this is a really cool scenario. I like this a lot. I think I did get pretty lucky on the rolls. It's three, four, five. Let me grab my bag of final health tokens. Okay. Weirdly, the pistol and bow can be used on targets in the street, even if you're in a house or if you're on a street, they can be fired into a house. So there's our six token there. And now we have a killer. We have a killer. So I don't need to check the lab anymore. I can't move. He's going to hunt and attack me uh, on his killer action. We are not quite at the finale yet, but we will be after this this card. We'll resolve the, the finale card there. So all that being said, I think we are going to... Well, I guess we can only really. Oh, and then I have the guard. That's such a cool. No, he uh, he panicked. He's actually in the hallway now. So he, he ran away. Okay. Let's go ahead and run. What, I'm trying to figure out, do I want to roll focus first or distraction first? I think focus first. I'll roll two. Got a star. 
Yeah. So we lose a time. This goes down. Then we'll play distraction. We get to roll three. Got one success. We're going to toss a search and a short rest to make this two successes. Which allows us to reduce this by two. One, we get a time. And then this goes up by two. So we're at eight. We're hanging on to a furious strike. We will end our action phase. Oh, the monster panicked? Uh, yeah, so... Why did it do that? Oh. It, it, I did move it with me. I did move it with me. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay, so then it's going to attack me. You're right, you're right. Anyways... Yeah, because I came in through this way, and I would have moved him with me. So, yeah. So, yeah, he's going to attack me. Let's go ahead and go back to that real quick. I'm rolling. He's attacking me for two. We're just going to take the two damage. Move to a victim. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, because we applied this. You're right. You are you are right. Thank you. I was like, where did that come from? We resolved the, the bloodlust effect, which moved it to a victim. Um, but it specifically said victim. Alrighty, so we got eight to buy. Um, I mean, that critical blow looks pretty sweet. Um, we do need to move. What does this get us? We got two, four. That puts us at five cards. Um, he's got a lot of health. I'm thinking critical blow could be really nice. Go ahead and grab the critical blow for six. Gonna take us down to two. We're going to see if we can do this with no items. Because so we got a critical blow. We've got a furious strike. And we've got a weak attack in our hand right now. Um, there is a high likelihood that we end our action on this. So actually, let's go ahead and grab two close calls. And we'll reset. Okay. All right. So killer is going to move to the final girl or a victim. It's currently in here, so it can move there. Ty goes to targets a victim. I thought Ty, I thought there were like three ways to do a Ty. And I think I've always kind of just done Ty's go to what the killer would probably do. Cause I th yeah, they talk about how to resolve ties, and I think it's a fairly interesting system because you can. It's basically how you can. Um... Blood lost tokens discarding game ambiguity, the rule of imminent evil, or is it actually a? I played one game versus Geppetto, whereas. Puppet spent most of the game going back and forth uselessly because people kept panicking, <laughs> creating a new equidistant space. <laughs> that's that's really funny. Um, okay, so the panic fit. No, the upkeep phase. So attacking the final girl. Killer action. Moving. The killer will always take the shortest path possible. If there are multiple, move multiple times needed to reach target, for example. Yeah. Killer will stop as soon as it reaches intended target. Sometimes the killer will move through a space with that has the final girl or victim and will not stop because they're in the intended target. Murder spaces. Uh, targeting. If there's still a tie between the closest, there is still a tie referred to the rule. The target is the closest victim. The target. The target is whomever is closest, victim or final girl. 
if there's still a tie between who's the closest, uh, choosing the group that has the most victims present. So he will move up here. I was going to say, that's probably what I would have chosen, even if with the game ambiguity, where like he would go to the more victims. So he's going to move. Oh, wait, actually, he doesn't move. Just kidding. He's just attacks. Um, okay. We got, if the helicopter is at station 2891, it is not, and you are on an outdoor space, you can take two random item cards from the ones that are out of play. Jeez, that seems good. Now we're going to resolve an event. Pair up. Everyone stay together. No one should be left alone. Remove all of the victims that are alone in a space from the board and place two of them at a time in the following locations. There are no alone victims. <laughs> uh... That's pretty funny. So that just doesn't do anything. Now it's gonna he's gonna target the final girl. He's going to move one. So he's gonna move into our hallway and he's going to attack me. Okay. I will use my here so I can play a copy of guard as if it was in my hand. He's attacking for two. I'm going to use this guard. Uh, reduce reduce uh, damage by one to a minimum of one. We'll reduce one. Just take the no successes on that. Three options for ambiguity. Choose one and always apply rule of infinite evil. Pick the worst option for you. Rule of drama. Pick the most thematic option. Rule of infinite hilarity. Pick the option that leads to the most funny. I love that. that that's so fun. Um, I typically go for rule of drama. Right? It's a very thematic game. I want it to feel very thematic. And so it's like, if the killer had the option to go kill two people or take or try and kill the final girl, I think it would go for the two people. Um, okay. And now it is the, fi it's the finale. It is the finale now. And so we're going to resolve a finale card. Just a... Uh, Alrighty, let's uh, let's. Sh we got one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a two. When this card is revealed, any remaining exposed victims are immediately assimilated. None of that. Okay. If there's only one mutated organism in play, and you are in its space at the beginning of the killer phase, you have been assimilated and lose the game. Do I have a move? I do have a move, so I could I can get out of there. Uh oh my goodness. Okay, so that is intense. So I cannot be at in the in the space at the end of Well killers always prefer going after victims if there's a choice. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. So this poses Oh wait, we never did this. Okay, so this poses some interesting um, issues. Okay. Okay, so we are in its space. If we end up in its space, we lose the game. See how... Oh, yeah, this game can be brutal. Hit and run tactics. I think that's what we're going to be doing. But on our critical blow and our furious strike, if we whiff, we lose the game. On, actually, on all of our attacks... If we whiff, we lose the game. So, uh, let's uh, let's hope we don't whiff. We do have two close calls, so I think we should be fine. Let's go ahead and run a critical blow. These these three dice have not been nice to me recently. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch them out. Okay, so we got one. We will go ahead and discard a focus and a walk to make that a, a double success. So we get a time, and we deal three damage to him. Two, three. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll Furious Strike. This is so intense. I should not have done that. Oh, jeez. We're going to 
close call, spend two to re-roll all of them. That's game. That is game right there. No. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. That's game. That's on me. That's, 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 that was not the right thing to do. Ah, uh, yeah, no, I should have, I should have hit him and run out. But because I only got one success here. No, wait, hold on. I can spend two time. Just kidding. We can, we can get real risky here. Do we switch dice? I think we switch dice. I think we switch dice. Go these two. Sad. I didn't roll any successes on those nine dice. And so, um, yeah, so that is going to be, that's going to be game. Oh, I was so close. I really enjoyed this one. That's a tough card because I immediately have to end my turn. And then I end, I start in the space of the killer. I become assimilated and I lose the game. What was his final health token anyways? Hmm. He had zero. I had zero. Ah, so close. So close. And that's what I like about this game. That that was that was something that I probably should have walked away. Um let him come to me. Yeah, I, I should have just take taken the hit, walked away, and then had him come to me. He could attack, I could have guarded because I can play guard from my hand. And then attacked, walked away, and let him kind of like do that. You wander in the station forever as a horrible creature. Yeah, and I'm, I'm assuming that we, we take out these two victims as well. So I guess now... Okay, yeah, so I guess now I'm on his team. So I, I guess I win, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. This one was a really cool... I, I, I very much enjoyed this setup. The organism I thought was really interesting going around and trying to figure out and check every one of them. I felt it was just easiest to go into the lab to check. But I think if we're not playing at Station 2891, we have to get the test kits and everything to test them. Walk away and pick up Retaliate might have been better. Yeah. Yeah. That, yes, that would have been good. <laughs> uh, it comes down to a blunder. It comes down to a blunder. But yeah, that, that was Final Girl. The organism is Station 2891. Uh, really cool. I like this game a lot. So... That's going to be it for today's stream, but uh, yeah, the next stream is going to be next week at some point. That was close, yeah. That was, mm, it was so close. So close. I want it. I want it. Um, GG, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, so the next stream is going to be sometime next week. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it on Monday. It depends on how exhausted I'm going to be because starting tomorrow is Gen Con. And so thank you, Beast Snow. Have fun at Gen Con. Yeah, so tomorrow is Gen Con. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, here's hoping uh, yeah, Yuki redeems herself. Oh, and I don't get to open the card. Sad. So, uh, yeah, tomorrow starts Gen Con. I got a lot of stuff planned for that. I got a lot of videos and hopefully more content. Well, no, absolutely more content coming y'all's way. Uh, but, yeah, so thank you all for hanging out. I appreciate you all, and I will talk to you all soon. See you around. Peace.